question 7a structure of compound p um, is shown in figure 7.1 part 1 p is optically active use aesthetic to identify all the chiral carbon in this p okay so in this structure you just will get one chiral carbon so this one because this carbon is has one two three and another hydrogens here so four groups so that's why this is a chiral carbon and part two plain polarized light is passed through a pure sample of one in enantiomers of p this is then repeated with a pure sample of another uh, in enantiomers of p uh, is uh, something like this uh, the plain polarized light is the light that travel uh, in one direction only okay like this when this light pass through the enantiomers one enantiomers let's say this one so it will be rotated let's say this one is the positive enantiomer so it will rotate to the positive angle uh, let's say example is rotate to positive 5 degree if let's say we let this polarized light pass through another enantiomers let's say this is positive just now and this is ne negative so this enantiomers will try to rotate this polarized light to negative angle but the magnitude is the same okay, let's say now it's negative 5 degree now, so this is the difference between the enantiomers the positive and negative enantiomers okay so if you understand this then you can answer uh, the, this part Okay, describe the results of these two experiments stating the similarities and difference of the result. Okay, so the plane of porous light will be rotated for both enantiomers. Okay, this one is the uh, the the uh, similarities. And the light will be rotated by the same angle in opposite direction so this is a different magnitude is the same but direction difference so this one is the uh, similarities means both will be rotated different is they will go to different direction but same magnitude part b p can be used to make compound q in one single step so this is q q is the uh, here is the m uh, this part not really change okay this is p so this part not really change this is the part that changed from m in to m i so in order to form m i from m in this m in need to react with the acyl chloride the acyl chloride we can easily uh, deduce it uh, from this structure okay let's say this one undergo bond break you just need to add a Cl here and you add H here so you get the acyl chloride so this is acyl chloride ethanol chloride CH3COCl okay if you know if you want to know how it uh, reacts and how it's formed okay this is this is the way the amine group in the P will react with the ethanol chloride Okay, and this is a condensation reaction H from the amine and the Cl from the uh, ethanol chloride will <clears throat> react and form HCl and this N will form new bonding with the C here to form the amine okay, part 1 give the structural formula of the compound that is added to P to make Q and give the formula of another product of this reaction uh, so the one that need to be added is ethanol chloride. Ah, so the side product is what? Hexia. This one. So therefore is this. Okay, part two. When an ester is treated with lithium aluminum hydride in dry ether, the ester bond will break and you need to add four hydrogen atom 
and two alcohol will be produced. Uh, this statement you need to follow. Okay, so means is something like this. Esther treated with this, uh, so the Esther bond break here. Esther bond break. And after that, you need to add four hydrogen. Means the carbonyl here need to add two hydrogen, as shown here. And this carbonyl carbon add two hydrogen, and this oxygen need to add one hydrogen. And the O here need to add another hydrogen. So total four hydrogen. After this reaction, it's going to form two alcohol. One and two alcohol. Uh, this reaction uh, is not really uh, the one that you learn in your syllabus. Okay, so you just need to follow this statement. Okay, how it's formed the two alcohol is something like this. Okay, you just follow this instruction. All right. Okay, now draw the structure of the compounds formed when Q is treated with excess of lithium aluminium uh, hydride in dry ether. So answer obviously is this one. All right, means this one. Of course, uh, you can for this one you can uh, because it draw structures of compound form. Uh, you can put this uh, the methanol also no problem, right? <clears throat> Part three, compare the relative basicity of P, Q, and phenylamine. Uh, phenylamine is this, and the P. is the again is the amine okay this one p is has one amine group so is uh, relatively basic than others All right and this is q q is an amide amide actually is non not really basic we can say that non basic why because the lone pair on nitrogen if you delocalize in uh, this uh, uh, elect uh, pi electron system in the carbonyl, right? So make it less available, so it won't really able to donate to others. That's why the amide is uh, relatively non basic compared to amine. Okay, so from here we can do the comparison easily. The most basic it will be p because p has one amine. And followed by phenylamine. Phenylamine, the lone pair on the nitrogen will delocalize in the pi electron system in benzene ring. So it's also less available. But the availability is greater than the amide. Because amide is, has one electron uh, withdrawing group. The oxygen, oxygens will pull electrons uh, much greater than the the benzene ring. So that's why the lone pair on the amide is less available. That's why it's less basic. So this is a trend. Huh? P most basic followed by phenylamine, then the least basic is Q. Okay, explain your answer. Then uh, normally we will explain the most basic and least basic. So why the P is most basic? Because P again is the primary amine and the alkyl group attached to the N has electron donating nature which will increase the electron density on the N and it can donate to others easily. Q is an amide and the lone pair on Q delocalized okay, by these uh, carbonyl groups which decreased electron density on nitrogen. So it's less available 
okay, and not really able to donate to others. You can explain the phenylamine. Why phenylamine is less basic than P? Uh, because the lone pair of, uh, of, of N delocalized into the benzene ring. Okay, but the first two is actually enough. Okay, because this one is one mark, this one one mark, one mark. Okay, part C. P can be used to make compound R, this one, in two-step reaction. So we need to uh, compare the P and R. What, what are the differences? Okay, so if it is, uh, the R is, has an uh, extra okay, NH2 here, and it has OH here, means the ester now form carboxylic acid. So basically, it's going to involve these two steps. First step is going to be a nitration. Nitration. So means it's going to uh, be the concentrated H2SO4 with concentrated uh, HNO3. Uh, temperature you can put 55 degrees C because the range is 50 to 60. Okay, after that, the nitro group will introduce to the benzene ring. Okay, because the okay, this one is an alkyl group. I mean this one is an alkyl group. So it has the 246 uh, directing nature. So this is one, two, three, four. Okay, that's why it can direct the uh, nitro group. Okay, to this uh, position, right? Okay, after it's being uh, uh, nitrated, uh, but uh, before the second step, uh, you have to understand because the acid that you use here. So, ester will get hydrolyzed when it's uh, uh, under acidic condition. So that's why this ester group will break, and this one will form carboxylic acid, and this will form the alcohol. So that's why after the first step, it's going to introduce a nitro group and the carboxylic acid groups will form. After that, it needs to undergo reduction. To reduce nitro benzene, okay, this one, this nitro benzene, the nitro group, uh, when it's reduced, it needs to uh, remove two oxygen, add two hydrogen. So when we use the thin with concentrated HCl, okay, reflux and followed by this sodium hydroxide. Uh, it need to use sodium hydroxide at the end because it need to make sure the amines form. Uh, okay, so therefore it can form this compound R after the second step, right? So the nitro group now converts or reduce to the amine. So this is a phenylamine group, right? So these are the answer, step one and step two. Okay, complete table 7.1 by drawing the structure of organic products from when R is treated uh, with uh, reagents given. So this one is the, okay, this is R again, this R. When these R first, is treated with HNO2 at 4 degrees C. Uh, so this one is the condition for diazotization. Means the phenylamine means this one. It need to convert to the uh, azo group, di diazo, uh, diazonium, benzene diazonium ion, this one. So means the NH2 need to convert to this benzene diazonium ion right okay so this one no change and the second reagent is uh, this one is not the it's not continuous one it's separate reagent okay if let's say the R reacts with the excess bromine so we know that now we have two groups this uh, Amine group is the 
uh, two four positions uh, directing ability means uh, whenever there is a nine uh, this uh, uh, admin group sorry admin group so if you direct two four position means one two three four okay so means you're going to direct this and this position okay so four already occupied so means the brominations it needs to happen at these two positions only so means when we use excess bromine so the bromine will substitute or the halogenation will happen at these two positions right so this one is the electrophilic substitution Okay, part D. P can be used to produce compound T. So now this is a compound T. In the aqueous solution, T has a uh, property called isoelectric point. Isoelectric point uh, is the point that uh, it has a neutral charge. Right? So this is always a definition. Okay, explain what it means by isoelectric point. So you can give this one or this one. Okay, the pH where the species present as zitron ion means the uh, the amine will form ammonium and this carboxylic acid will form the carboxylic salt. Okay, part two. Uh, this part is uh, quite quite uh, complicated. Uh, you need to know how to uh, form the polymer. Okay, T can be polymerized polymerized under suitable condition no others monomers involved draw a section of polymer it must be a polymer and you must show the tails this one and this one and this polymer you need to draw three monomers inside the polymer chain three T monomers okay, identify the repeat uh, units on your diagram Okay, so how to do it? Very easy. You need to put uh, this T side by side. Make sure the carboxylic acid group next to the amine group. Because carboxylic acid will react with the amine and it's form the, uh, this uh, amide group. Okay, so therefore this one is a condensation. H2O's will form and the CN bonds will form then it will form this CONH Mi bond okay this one is involved one two and three monomers and this one you just remove it put the tail this one you remove it put the tail and this one same undergo condensation okay form H2O and CN bonds form from amide bonds here. So eventually you will get this structure. Okay, this polymer uh, chain with <clears throat> this repeat unit. Okay, this is one repeat unit, another repeat unit, another repeat unit. Uh, this is how you draw the polymer chain. It depends. Sometimes they will ask uh, the uh, two ice two monomers three monos and so on depends on the question okay i hope you understand thank you